Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game for Scratch, and today we are talking about the Diligent Engine. Diligent Engine 2.4G, I believe it was, was recently released. Now, I talked about Diligent Engine back in 2019. Uh, this is a cross-platform, I'll, I'll call it a rendering framework. Basically, it is above the low-level stuff, but way below the likes of like Unreal, uh, Unity, and Godot, etc. on the, um, the closeness to the metal, we shall say. It is a rendering framework. It abstracts away the underlying renderers, things like DirectX... Uh, Let's see, we got OpenGL, OpenGL ES, uh, Vulkan, uh, DirectX 11, and DirectX 12 support here as various different back ends. So if you want to create your own game engine or your own game using a, a graphics framework instead of a full fat, full featured game engine, a diligent engine is probably where you want to go. Because for example, to get a single triangle rendering on screen using Vulkan, you're looking at 900 to about 1100 lines of code. They are not really code-friendly frameworks to work with. And at the same time, if you use that one, for example, if you use Vulkan, well, Vulkan doesn't run on iOS platforms or on Mac. So then what are you going to use? And there's kind of the problem. Whereas if you use a higher level rendering framework, which by the way, later in this video, I will discuss a few other options that are out there. Well, they take care of the complexities for you. So here we can see one of their examples is their atmospheric rendering example. I'm playing with the sun here and you can see the various different effects of the sun on the scene as I pop in behind the landscape or up and over. There is a ton of control over this one. For example, I come in here, I can change the tone mapping on it uh, to say a filmic. Different, uh, different ways of rendering, different looks and so on are available to you. Uh, there is a ton of control. You can control over how shadow maps are rendered, over how sampling should be done and so on. So it gives you an idea of the behind the scenes level of um, technology configuration you've got for the rendering. At the same time, you want to switch out the scattering technology, we can do so. Uh, we should probably go back to the this one because we got a lot more options on it. You can change out the sampling amounts. Uh, you can have it show the samplings and the details that are available. So this is one of the examples for using Diligent Engine. Uh, so it is a C++ based project. It uses CMake. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to get going. Basically, you just uh, git clone the source code. Uh, you then uh, run CMake to build for your tool of choice, in my case, Visual Studio. And then I open the solution file and we go from there. This is the solution file. And what you're seeing in front of you, this is the source code of a, the new ray tracing example. So that's the big new feature in 2.4G. It now supports ray tracing. So if you're wondering what kind of uh, the code looks like, I'm not going to go into the code in detail, but this gives you an idea. This is all of the source code required required uh, to, to render the, the example we're about to see. And the new features here are definitely uh, support for ray trace lighting and so on. Again, it's still not trivial. This is not, a, if you want a simple productive game development experience, you're not trying to work this low to the hardware, you're probably going to want to go with something like a full game engine, Unity, Unreal, Godot, CryEngine, Lumberyard, etc. But if you want to get more close to the metal, this is a good option without having to go all the way down to the metal in dealing directly with something like Vulkan or uh, DirectX 12. And as I mentioned earlier on, to draw a triangle, a single triangle in Vulkan is generally about a, a thousand lines of setup code. And so this example here, so let me go ahead. This is a new uh, tutorial. You'll see here there are a ton of different tutorials to walk you through everything too, by the way. And then a number of different demonstrations, including their uh, I am GUI uh, UI implementation and the nuclear, which is, seems to be another um, UI layering that option that's available out there. But here is the new one. I'll just go ahead. We'll set this as our startup project like so. And let's go ahead and run it. Now, immediately, when you run any of these examples, you see one of the big strengths of the Diligent Engine. What you've got here is a choice between rendering backends. You can run this on DirectX 11, DirectX 12, OpenGL, or Vulkan. Now, since this is a ray tracing example, our ray tracing is by far the most mature and stable on DirectX 12 at this point in time. So let's go ahead and see that. So here is the example in action. This is showcasing the new ray tracing, te ray tracing, ray tracing technology here. A um, couple things going on here. We can see on this sphere over here, uh, we can have the, the reflection. So we got uh, no blur at all in our reflection here. All the light sources are coming through, bouncing through here, and then landing on there. We could go ahead and add an amount of blur in like so. You can see the, the shadows being calculated in real time. We can turn any one of these cubes off at any particular time if we want. Uh, we can do the number of uh, recursive rays being cast here. 
We can have the shadow blurring so we can soften the shadows that are being cast by these guys. And that's really what ray tracing gives you. It gives you better reflections and better, more accurate shadows. Generally, that is the reality of it. Plus, if you've got uh, multiple things um, reflecting into each other, that's where your uh, recursion kind of really comes in. You can get um, much better reflection details as a result. And we've also got the ability to change the dispersion of this cube. So you can see here as light's coming through, we can have it disperse. We can change the... Uh, a refraction IOR there like so and we can also change the dispersion factor and we can also change out the dispersion samples and that as you saw we just chugged things down so that's one of the things you want to be really careful of when you're dealing with ray tracing when some of these things are going to be an order of magnitude slower we can also show how much of it to absorb as we were coming through so that there basically is their new ray tracing example and the big new thing behind 2.5 4G. So if you want to check that out, it is a new example here. So let's head on over to the website of this demonstration. And we are now at their website. It's available at diligentgraphics.com. Now, one of those things that I find is first off, the only versions of their logo out there are like antiquated as heck in terms of like super small, uh, low resolution images. And this looks like something out of a 1960s font. So every time I cover the Diligent engine, I have to come up with a better looking uh, logo every time. And it's kind of frustrating. I really wish that they, but it, very minor nitpick. I won't go there. Uh, the big thing here is 2.4G was just released. Uh, the big new feature here, of course, is the ray tracing. Ray tracing is supported in Direct3D 12 and the Vulkan backends. Vulkan just recently got ray tracing support, which actually gives you an idea of how up to date these guys are. And it's exposed through an easy to use yet fully exhaustive API. Exactly the same host code works on both back ends. So if you're writing for Vulkan, it doesn't matter. You could run it on DirectX 12 or DirectX 12 doesn't matter. You can run it on Vulkan. As you saw in this particular example, I basically just picked the rendering runtime at, well, runtime. Uh, so similar to other shader types, ray tracing shaders are authored in HLSL work in both back ends verbatim. A Vulkan back end also supports GLSL as well as Spur uh, bytecode. There is a new tutorial in, uh, Place that we saw the source code for it there. And then we got a number of different changes and improvements on the pipeline as things evolved. So those are the key features of 2.4.G. Of course, the big thing there is the ray tracing support. And I do have to give uh, them kudos. It's impressive that they have it working on Vulkan already as Vulkan just got ray tracing support officially like, I don't know, was that two months ago, three months ago? Covered it on the channel. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, this is an entirely open source project. Uh, so it is under the Apache 2 license. Apache 2 license is one of the more liberal licenses out there. You can't sue them for what they've done. Um, and, you know, so if your computer melts, that's on you. Uh, it, like I mentioned earlier on, it is a CMake-based project. So basically, just come on in here, clone the code, uh, make sure you have CMake installed, uh, build it for your environment of choice. There is documentation here on how to go ahead about doing that. In terms of the feature set here, you can see um, it's modular, high performance, clear and concise, C++ object-based, and stateless. Uh, a number of different graphic features out there, including now ray tracing. We've got mesh shaders, bindless resources, and other new nice features. We got a bunch of high level rendering components. So these are things built on the lower level stuff. Uh, we saw a lot of it in like the atmospheric light scattering. That was the first example I showed you. Tone mapping, which again, I showed you the switches to the ACES rendering tone mapping there. And shadows, we've got the two um, GUI systems, Dear I Am GUI and Nuclear, both implemented there as well. Uh, there's also physically based GLTF2 renderer. So uh, very common and interchangeable file format there. So here you can see the various different platforms and the plot, the, the rendering that is supported on them. So here on Mac OS, you've got OpenGL ES for now, Vulkan for now, kinda. Vulkan is done via something called Molten VK, but you've also got Metal in that particular case. Um, so you got, that is what this guy is all about. There's a good amount of documentation here. As I mentioned earlier on, you basically just clone it and down you go. Uh, and then you run CMake for your environment of choice. And then you open up the solution file that it created. Pretty straightforward to get up and running with the Diligent Engine. Now, if Diligent Engine isn't particularly what you are looking for, if there's something about this that you just kind of doesn't work for you, it is not by only means the only option. And no, that does not mean you have to start using uh, Vulkan or DirectX 12. There are other similar uh, 
placed frameworks at, at kind of about the same level. So if you want one other one, cross-platform rendering library to check out is BGFX. I will link both these in the linked article, by the way. So if you're interested in, you know, working at this level and you want something to take care of all of this crap for you, uh, BGFX could be a good choice. Where BGFX is really kind of nice is it goes back to really old versions where you're going to find Diligent Engine is focused a little bit more on the cutting edge. Here you've got back to WebGL 1.0. So if you've got to support the broadest amount of hardware possible, BGFX might be a good choice. And another one that's out there is the Wicked Engine. Very similar concept, um, very interesting project as well. And I have covered it on this channel as well. But anyways, that is the uh, Diligent Engine by Diligent Graphics. They just released 2.4 G. Uh, on well, it was two or three days ago, they actually released it. So uh, if you were looking for a lower level of graphics rendering program and something that uh, you know will take care of the muck for you, but has all the cutting edge graphics features, uh, definitely Diligent Engine is one worth checking out. All the relevant links linked down below. Let me know what you think. Talk to you all later.